Hello, my name is Collection Connoisseur. I collect digital thingamabobs and video games, and today I'm playing Slay the Spire. Now this time on Slay the Spire, we will be skipping the first turn of every battle. The community of Slay the Spire usually thinks that the first turn of the battle is the most important turn of the battle, so let's just skip that one and see how well we do. All right. So I'm going to start with playing with the Watcher. We have attempted this challenge with every character at this point. The Watcher is the only one that won, and it won on Ascension 1, the first Ascension level. So we're going to jack that up a little bit. We're going to go to Ascension 4 with the Watcher, and let's go. So as it says at the top, the rule for this challenge is the first thing that we do every battle is click the end turn button. So I'm not really constrained in any way by this challenge or the things I can choose here. So therefore, which one would I like to choose? I don't mind Meow's Lament. I don't mind getting a random boss relic. The random rare card is pretty bad as an option with the Watcher, I think. I think of the things for the Watcher, the random rare card is probably the worst one to pick. So we're going to not choose that one. Otherwise, what would I like? I really don't want a curse, so we're not going with the third option. So it's really Niao's Lament or lose pure water to get a random boss relic. I'm pretty happy to find a chance where I really like to take the random boss relic. I like this option a lot. I don't normally take it, but I like it a lot. Let's take it. We get a tiny house. Tiny house has upgraded vigilance for us. And we get a blessing of the forge and a card. I'm kind of thinking Fury of Blows, knowing almost nothing else. Third Eye is also not bad. But let's take a Fury of Blows to start off this run. Alright, where would we like to go? Typically with the Watcher, I like taking a bunch of Elites. That gets a little bit worse when we're skipping the first turn of every battle, because we're going to take a lot more damage than we normally would. Still. I guess I'm wondering whether we go there and here? There's a lot of fires. We could go to a bunch of fires and upgrade a lot of cards. Or we could go. We could go to this elite right here, hit three fires, and go to an early elite. Kind of like that. Let's aim towards this elite. Let's aim towards this question mark. And once we get there, we might decide to go a different path, depending on how we're how we fare when we get there. So, first turn of the battle, enter. We are frail, which is quite annoying because we are being attacked and don't really have much defense. I could play Eruption, but then we would take double damage. I could use the Blessing of the Forge immediately. If I use the Blessing of the Forge, we could play Eruption and two strikes because Eruption would go down to one cost. Don't know that I really like that, though. Let's just take out this slime and defend the little that we can. So we've taken 11 damage in this battle, by the way. 11 damage in the first battle is not great. I really like Talk to the Hand. Talk to the Hand is one of my favorite Watcher cards. Favorite in the terms of, I, I like to put it in almost every deck. Not favorite because 
I just really like the design of the card. That one gets reserved for Blasphemy. I really like Blasphemy. On the other hand, Cut Through Fate is really good too, but I want to choose Talk to the Hand. Let's choose Talk to the Hand. All right, the Jaw Worm, we end our turn and take 12 damage. That hurts. All right, you can see how you just take a whole lot more damage when you just, you know, let let the enemy hit you. I like Eruption here. So let's do a Fury of Blows, an Eruption, another Fury, of course, and I mean, no reason not to do Talk to the Hand instead of Strike, because either way we win, and this way we get Block if we need it. Oh, -ho, Brilliance. Brilliance is a pretty excellent attack. It is... It is basically a double strike. One cost, but you deal 12 damage, and it has this nice thing that if you gain Mantra, it does even more. But just getting that 12 damage is really nice. There's Cut Through Fate again too. I do like the Cut Through Fate. But Brilliance is a lot of damage. A lot of damage for one. And Debbie, welcome to the stream. Thanks for the luck. Said I was going there. Are we going to the shop? We do have 178 gold, so sure, let's go to the shop. And we could actually take the heal. The max HP plus 5 is also nice too. I don't think I'm going to take the heal. We wouldn't get the entire heal, but we would get 23 out of it. It might be a good idea to actually take the banana here. But I like the donut. Let's take the donut. Alright. The abacus does not do much for me. Not immediately, anyway. The ancient tea set is pretty terrible because it only affects the first turn of the battle. And same with the Bag of Preparation. It only affects the first turn of the battle. So both of those are quite bad. There's also another Cut Through Fate here. We could actually add a Cut Through Fate this time. I'm thinking about taking the Cut Through Fate and removing a card. The other option is taking the Abacus. I don't mind the Abacus. I think I want to remove a card. Let's remove a Strike. We've taken a few different attacks. I would, wouldn't would mind removing a Defend as well, but let's remove the Strike, add the Cut Through Fate. And do we want one of these? We could afford an attack potion for 50. I think I'm going to take that. One attack potion for 50. Spent exactly all of our money. The Golden Idol. Okay, so the Golden Idol could be bad. But I like taking the Golden Idol. We could just lose a little bit of max health. Let's take the Golden Idol, lose 6 max health. Especially since we just gained 5. The nice thing about gaining 5 max health and then losing 6 max health is your current health still goes up by 5. So, it's not too bad. And then I wanted to go to this elite. Do I still want to go to this elite? I think I still do. We have to make it through this elite and two normal battles before we can rest at a fire, and most likely we're going to rest at a fire. Oh, the perfect elite for this, because we end our turn, which is normally what you do anyway in that position. Now, I would like to get my Vigilance out. 
As much as I would like to play Eruption Bri Brilliance, hmm. We could do Cut Through Fate and then play Vigilance this turn and try to set up. Try to set up playing Eruption when we start in Calm. I think I want to do that. So let's. The other thing we could do is use the Blessing of the Forge right now, which is quite good. Actually, maybe we should use Blessing of the Forge right now. Let's do that. Blessing of the Forge. That way we can do Eruption, Brilliance, and Cut Through Fate. And the Brilliance does 32 damage. So we want... The Flurry of Blows to be in the discard it actually doesn't matter because we're going to draw next turn. We just don't want to discard the Vigilance because we don't want to draw or discard the Vigilance. We want to play the Vigilance this turn unless we just win. <laughs> Do we just win? That's 32 damage. We don't just win. So we're going to play Vigilance now and play the Flurry of Blows and win next turn. And we do win this turn. Great. All right, we came out of that elite battle without too much damage. Threaded Needle is actually very good in this challenge because it essentially blocks four damage every single battle. Because when we skip our first turn, we at least started with four armor. So, Knight's one to find. I would also like to find the Anchor, which gives us ten armor on the first turn. Foreign Influence isn't too bad. I do like Empty Fist, though. Empty Fist can be a lot of damage. And we do want that. Let's take an Empty Fist. It's also a good way to get out of, out of Wrath. Out of Wrath, out of Vigilance, a way to draw our Flurry of Blows. And I am planning to go... We're not going there anymore. That was a, a brief plan. We're going left because we want to hit all of those fires. Alright, skip the first turn. Normally we would take 14 here. Thanks to our Threaded Needle, we're only going to take 10. Only 10 damage. No problems. Are we going to take more damage right now, though? It's a good question. There's Vigilance in the discard pile. So one thing that could happen is we could play Cut Through Fate and get the Vigilance. Another thing that we could do is play Talk to the Hand... Flurry of Blows, Cut Through Fate, and Brilliance. I think that kills one. And it gives us enough armor that we don't take any damage. Okay, let's do that. Does it kill either of them? I think it does. So let's, let's hit the one that has more health and more armor. The Empty Fist... Sure, we can draw the Empty Fist. Let's not draw the Defend, though. And there we go. We take no damage. Eruption Brilliance wins. So I like my Bowling Bash. Bowling Bash really helps with multi-enemy fights, which I think the Watcher is quite bad at. So Bowling Bash is definitely an option. Master Reality affects nothing in our deck. Nothing in our deck. Let's take a Bowling Bash. Alright, 14 damage, which is going to be 10 again. Already, this Threaded Needle has, I think, saved 5 plus 4, 9, 9 of our health with the Threaded Needle. That's pretty good so far. Let's do... Let's do a Talk to the Hand 
Flurry, Bowling Bash, Defend. That'll defend everything and deal as much damage as we can this turn. It'd be nice if we had a way to block. I guess the way to do that is to play Cut Through Fate and hope to gain a way to block. We did not get one. So we're taking one more damage. And then we can win. Alright, we're down to 30. Being down to 30 does not feel great. We can take another Talk to the Hand or another Cut Through Fate. Or Conclude, for that matter. I do like Conclude. I actually really like all of these cards. All of them are quite good. Let's take a Conclude. And we are going to go to this fire. We're all, we are... Ah, having trouble saying those words. We are going to go to this fire. We are going to heal at that fire because we do need to heal. Mummified Hand, great. We don't have any powers yet, but this does make it so that we want to take some because it causes random cards in our hand to cost zero. Not bad. Let's rest because we need to. And then let's go after this other elite. So 12 damage this turn. Minus the four, of course. That that threaded needle has done a lot for us. We could play Eruption Conclude. Eruption Conclude does a lot of damage. And we could cause the Spike Slime to die right now. We have either Empty Fist or Brilliance next turn, potentially both. So yes, I want to do that. Kill that Spike Slime. Remember to use the Flurry of Blows. And then next turn, we've got something to kill that Jaw Worm. It's the Empty Fist. We could have another Empty Fist. We could have a follow-up. Or Protect. The nice thing about Protect is that if we draw it in the first hand, we still get to keep it. But that's about it. 12 block for 2 is not amazing. I think I'd rather have the follow-up. And at this point, we probably have enough attacks in the deck. I should be a little bit lower on attacks, maybe. Alright, skip the first turn. Skipping the first turn in this battle is really annoying, because we get more days in our deck because we skipped the first turn. And the first turn that we can do something, there's 20 damage coming our way. The talk to the hand is not very good in this battle. We could liquid memories something, like the vigilance. Doing liquid memories on vigilance is okay here. It gets us the vigilance, which gets us the block, puts us in calm, and gets us a flurry of blows. That's all pretty decent. Sure. Let's do that. So, Flurry of Blows, we get the... F well, that was Vigilance. We get the Flurry of Blows. If we play one Defend, we block fully. And we can play Talk to the Hand, Strike, and Flurry of Blows. So I guess we shall. Great, we can use our follow-up. We most likely want to end this one with Conclude. And an Empty Fist would give us some... some energy this turn. I kind of want to play the Cut Through Fate first. If we play Cut Through Fate, we could play Eruption. 
But then we can't play Empty Fist. If we play Eruption, the Conclude does 24 damage to all of them, which already kills the rightmost one. So I'm certainly thinking about that. And the only way to get it is playing Cut Through Fate. Maybe we play Cut Through Fate, we play everything except the Empty Fist? Sounds good to me. And how best to deal with this one? The Conclude is going to do 24 damage. So that means that we need to do 16 more. 16 is actually Cut Through Fate plus the Eruption. Great. Now we just deal some damage to this one and win with Conclude. Alright, we didn't even need to play the Strike. How about that? We got a Strike Dummy, which means our Strikes do more damage. I think that's it. I think that's the only... Is there anything else in the Watcher Pool that has the word Strike in it? I don't even know. Crush Joints is not bad. I do really like Simmering Fury. It's another way to go into Wrath, and it draws cards. Let's take a Simmering Fury. I feel the need to rest again. Do I really want to rest again? I don't. Let's Smith. We need to Smith some things. For example, we need to we ah, we need to smith eruption. We also need to smith empty fist. I actually want to smith a large number of these cards. Okay, let's start with eruption. Hey, we got another shop. At this shop, we cannot take the orrery. We don't have the money. We could take the study. It goes well with the mummified hand. And we could remove a card. We can't do both of those things, though. I think I'd rather remove a card than take the study. So let's remove a card. I really do want to remove another strike. Don't really like having all those strikes in the deck. Okay, that's it for that shot. And let's smith again. I want to smith Empty Fist because Smithing Empty Fist gives a lot of damage. Let's do that. And the boss. We skip the first turn. As always, as is our way. Now, is it possible for us to do enough damage to this boss so that we don't, we don't take the damage next turn? Maybe. Probably starts with a cut through fate. So we could discard the Vigilance and draw the Simmering Fury right now. I like that. So Simmering Fury, we're going to enter Wrath next turn. And Empty Fist does more than Brilliance now. So Empty Fist. So we're entering Wrath, we're going to do a ton of damage. Starting with Follow-Up and Flurry of Blows and an Eruption. Do we need this Attack Potion? We might want to use it anyway, even if we don't need it. Let's use it. The Bowling Bash is really good for the rest of this fight. Let's take the Bowling Bash. It's only okay right now, but it's it's really good at the later part of this fight. Oh, we... We got a really poor draw. <laughs> Alright, well. Let's block what we can. I have no fear that we're going to win this one, though. No fear. We've got this Brilliance, which just takes you out immediately. And this Empty Fist, which takes you out. Smoke Bomb. Well, we have it. We've got a Smoke Bomb, just in case. 
Ragnarok does a lot of damage. Scrawl draws a lot of cards. And Establishment doesn't affect any of the cards in our deck. Yeah, we don't have any retain cards. We could take it with the hopes of getting one. It goes well with Mummified Hand, but I don't think that's worth it. Let's take Scrawl. Draw lots of cards. The Runic Pyramid is not bad. That means that the cards we draw on the first turn, we get to keep for the second turn. The Slaver's Collar gives us more energy, which is very nice. And the Fusion Hammer does that too, but we can't smith. I like all of these. I think that the the Runic Pyramid is really good with the with the problem that we have with the post emptive thing. So let's take the Runic Pyramid and let's hope that we didn't need the energy that we just passed up. I think elites are going to be much more problematic in this act than the previous one, skipping the first turn. And most normal battles too. Let's go a whole bunch of question marks and fires. Yeah, question marks and fires. That's my plan for this act. We take 22 damage, minus the four. Ouch. That hurts. Now, what do we do? We probably start with Talk to the Hand. I want to play Simmering Fury as well, though. One of the things that we could do is play Vigilance and Simmering Fury, because the Conclude, the conclude does most of the damage we need to do. That is an option. I think we're going to do that option. So we're going to play the Flurry of Blows first, of course. Flurry of Blows, Vigilance, Flurry of Blows. And then we play Simmering Fury. All right, take some more damage. And then we should win this turn. They, they are both done attacking me. Okay. So I said we should win this turn. Bowling Bash does a lot of damage, does 28. So now the conclude takes out that one. Follow up takes out you. We deal some more damage and conclude the battle. Great. I like it when the cards, when the name of the card fits with what just happened. I like the empty body. Upgraded empty body gives 10 block, exits the stance. That's pretty nice. Let's take that. There's also a lot to be said for just lucky because of the runic pyramid. Having zero cost things in the deck is pretty nice. Let's take the empty body. Ooh, some potions. I would like some potions. Are we going to a shop anytime soon? There is a shop there. Still, let's take three potions. And I probably like all of these more than what we have. The Bottled Miracle is better than Energy Potion, technically. It's very similar. Let's discard the smoke bomb, take the the explosive potion and the energy potion. Keep the liquid bronze there. Yes. All right. Shelled parasite. We can play flurry of blows. Play eruption, flurry of blows again, and then vigilance. Actually, we can't do any of that because we have to just click end turn. 
All right, now we could do that. <laughs> All right, so let's do the things that I just said. Actually, we could do we could do the vigilance first because we got we drew the empty fist. Great. So flurry of blows, vigilance, flurry of blows again, eruption. Flurry of Blows again. Empty Fist, exiting our stance. Flurry of Blows again. And should we play Simmering Fury? I think we do. Not that we can draw the cards, but I want it to be back in Wrath. Start with a Brilliance, and then a Cut Through Fate. Colorless Potion. Do I like that more than one of my energy potions? Not really. Don't really need Crescendo with the deck that we have. Do we want Protect that adds 16 block for 2? The Retain does not matter when we have Runic Pyramid. I think the answer is no, so let's skip. So the, the five apparition is actually not very good <laughs> when when you skip the first turn of every battle. This is normally a very good deal, losing half of your max health for five apparition. But I think with our current challenge, this is actually not good because we're going to be taking damage the first turn in a lot of battles and having less max health makes it hardest, harder to survive. So... I think our challenge has made this not a good decision. Oh well. Hey, we can we can do this. This is excellent. So we trade the golden idol for the bloody idol. Whenever we gain gold, we heal 5, which means we essentially heal 5 every battle. That's very important to me. Let's take that. All right, the bloody idol. We might want to rest here. I'm not really planning to go to any elites until that one. So let's smith. Let's smith for now. And what do we want to smith? Smithing conclude is pretty good. 16 damage is a lot more than 12. That is the same reason to smith brilliance. Let's smith conclude. I think that this one is a nice smith target. And then the shop. Can't afford the relics. The Nirvana isn't terrible. It's not terrible, especially because we do have Cut Through Fate. That's that's about it, though. We could just remove another card. I also like Prostrate. Prostrate is a good way to get into a Mantra deck, because it's good as a zero-cost gained four block. It also makes our brilliance better because of the mantra gained. Kind of like prostrate. And I wouldn't mind another bowling bash either. So let's take prostrate and bowling bash. I'm also thinking about the power potion, but let's let's not. And smith again. Do we want to smith prostrate? It just upgrades the mantra. I think the answer is no until we have more mantra. So until then, do we want brilliance? I think we do. Smith brilliance. All right, we've got a deck that can deal lots of damage. The problem is surviving. Vajra. Excellent. Extra strength on the Watcher is especially good. And 25 gold with a small heal. 
As much as I would love to smith yet again, I think it would be a bad idea on this one. I think we should rest. And then, do we continue the question mark path? I really like the constant question marks. Let's do constant question marks. There's the cursed tome. Oh my, the cursed tome. It could be good. It could be kind of pointless. One of the options gives us a power in our first turn. We don't get to play it first turn, but we've got the Runic Pyramid. One of the options makes two cost attacks get played twice. We don't have any of those right now, but we could add one sometime. And then one of them, we can change our deck every turn of the battle. We can add a random card every turn of the battle. You know, it's pretty good. Let's do it. We get the Necronomicon, so it doesn't do anything for us right now. The Runic Pyramid is, is actually quite bad with this one because it has a curse in it that we can't get rid of. And the Runic Pyramid retains that curse in our hand. So now we really want a, a two-cost attack card so that we can take advantage of the Necronomicon. Once we have that, it'll be quite good. Until we have that, it's terrible. So there's Reach Heaven, which is good. I guess we're going to take Reach Heaven because we just got Necronomicon. Okay, I'll take that. Let's not take the Consecrate. Let's not take the Consecrate. And go into this elite battle. It's the Book of Stabbing. Not a great one to end the first turn immediately with, but that does not stop us. That is what we're doing. Well then, I probably want to use one of our potions, one of our, our energy potions this time. So what are we doing? Probably Vigilance, Empty Fist. Maybe we play Vigilance and Simmering Fury and plan to do things next turn. I don't want to take 21 damage this turn, but the only way to not take damage is with Vigilance and Talk to the Hand. It might be better to, to do more damage next turn, though. So let's let's do Vigilance, Simmering Fury. Take some more damage this turn. And next turn, we'll use one of the ener energy potions. Probably. So Reach Heaven gets played twice. That's quite nice. Do we want to play Talk to the Hand? Uh, certainly, because I don't think we're winning this turn. So let's play Talk to the Hand. That gains us a lot of block. Then the Reach Heaven. We double play that one. And now is a good time to play Cut Through Fate, because we could draw one of those. Let's... Let's discard both of those. We'll get the Flurry of Blows with the Empty Fist. Oh, and we get a follow-up. Great. And I said I wanted to use an Energy Potion. Does it matter which one? Let's just use the normal Energy Potion. So here's a Brilliance. Doing 34 damage. Oh, we just win this turn, don't we? I did not notice that we were going to win this turn. Okay, fine. We win this turn. Demaru, at the start of each turn, we gain one mantra. We're starting to get some mantra into our deck. How about that? 
Weave is fine. Just Lucky is okay. Kind of like the Just Lucky. Let's take the Just Lucky. It doesn't do a lot, but it does some good things. Alright, skip the first turn, take 24 damage. That hurts. I'm very, very glad that we got this Threaded Needle. It has saved us so much health. So much health. So, Flurry of Blows we could do first, or we could do Reach Heaven first. We probably want to play Vigilance. What do we do this turn? I want to play Reach Heaven because it gets double played. But if we do that, we can't play Vigilance without playing the Miracle. So maybe we play Vigilance and Prostrate? Fine. Let's, let's not do tons of damage this turn. Let's pri prioritize that a future turn. So Flurry of Blows, Prostrate, Vigilance. Now we could do the Flurry of Blows, Just Lucky. There's a cut through Fate on top. I want that on top. And then a Defend. So we fully block here. Brilliance gets stronger because of Demaru. And we should be able to win this battle pretty soon. Let's start with a cut through fate to see what's coming up. So eruption is going to be one of the things on top. That's good. How many cards do we have in our hand? We have a full hand. So we need to get rid of cards in our hand so that we can draw Eruption. I did want to play Reach Heaven, but I think we play two other cards so that we guarantee that we we draw Eruption next turn. So what are we playing? We're playing a Talk to the Hand and a Strike. And then we draw Eruption. We've got a follow-up. Let's start with Eruption. Eruption. Flurry of Blows. Follow-up. Let's do follow-up next. Flurry of Blows. Or... I'm thinking about the correct time to play Flurry of Blows. I think it's not yet. Reach Heaven next. And then a Brilliance. And then we just win, and we never had to play Flurry of Blows. All right. Wheel Kick. That's great. It gets double played by Necronomicon. It is already upgraded. Let's take it. And we're going to have to rest here. Can we defeat this boss? I am not sure. I'm not sure if we defeat this boss when we just click end turn on the first turn. I don't know. We're taking a lot of damage this turn. We could play Conclude, but if we played Conclude, we could not be in Wrath and survive. We could play a Wheel Kick. But if we played Wheel Kick, we would also die, I think. I think we play a Vigilance, Prostrate, and Defend this turn. And a Just Lucky. Let's do that. So, Vigilance, Prostrate. So that is 20 block. Just Lucky is going to deal a little bit of damage. I like the Talk to the Hand right there. We definitely want to play that. And then, yeah, we play the Defend. The Bowling Bash will do really well next turn. 
Okay. We did not draw a way to get out of Wrath. Oh, we had one already, the Empty Fist. So, we play Eruption. Do we play Empty Fist, or, I mean, talk to the hand first? I think we do. Talk to the hand first, then Eruption. The Conclude is going to deal 34 damage, so this one's already dead. Let's put the Eruption here, then. Oh, the Conclude is not going to deal that much damage, because we have to play the Empty Fist before it. Right. What does that mean that we play? What order do we play these cards in? Let's do the Eruption. Now, follow up. Maybe now Bowling Bash? Bowling Bash just completely takes out one of these. So, completely take out one of those. The Empty Fist, along with anything, can take that one out. And we are going to play Empty Fist, because we don't want to die. Let's do the follow-up here, so we gain a little bit of block. Let's do the Empty Fist here. Actually, we should probably use our Bottled Miracle this turn. Yes, we should use the Bottled Miracle this turn. And just use it as if it were an energy potion. How do we want to take care of that one? Hello, Jimmy. Welcome to the stream. This is the first run. Watcher on Ascension 4. And we are skipping the first turn of every battle. I think we play the Brilliance to take out the Torch Head. And then I really want to play Wheel Kick twice with the Necronomicon. That allows me to play Flurry of Blows. And we could play Empty Fist instead, or an Empty Body instead of Empty Fist. If we play Empty Fist, we gain four more block because we get the Empty Fist and the Flurry of Blows. If we don't play, if we play the Empty Body, we get essentially 12 block. How much block do we need? We're taking 21 damage. We have 13 coming in. We do heal fully at the end of this battle. I don't think we need the maximum block. So let's play Empty Fist. Keep the Empty Body for a future turn, where we might need it even more. Alright, so this is where this enemy gets really gets really more difficult. We can draw any of those with Cut Through Fate, and I think, I think we want to draw Reach Heaven. The other thing we could do is play Simmering Fury. Let's play Simmering Fury. And play the Reach Heaven next turn. Let's do that. Therefore, this turn we're going to play a Strike. And let's play one of the Defends to get them out of the hand, I think. Or we could play Conclude because it's hard to get that in. Let's play the Conclude. So, here's where we take way too much damage. That That is what we call way too much damage. Granted, it's currently doubled because we're in Wrath, and we're going to end this turn with Empty Body. So, we're not going to take that damage... We're not going to end up taking that damage. I really wanted to play Reach Heaven because we double play it. And I think I still do. 
So let's play Reach Heaven. We get two through violence on the top of our deck. It'd be great if we could play those when we're in Wrath. The only way we could do that is if we played Cut Through Fate right now. We don't win if we do that. Because those do 20 damage normally, plus the Vajra, plus the Wrath is 42. And the Cut Through Fate does not do enough to kill the Collector this turn. Although the Scrawl... Wait a minute, does the Scrawl win? I think Scrawl wins. Yeah, we've got space in our hand to draw two cards. And both of those cards are going to be through violence. And the through violences are both going to deal 42 damage. 31 damage. Because we're weakened. Well, it happens to be just enough. <laughs> So it's still one. <laughs> but I did the math wrong because I did not consider the fact that we were weakened. <laughs> All right. I still don't really want any of those cards. So Master Reality, unfortunately, does not work. Or, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking of a different card. But Master Reality only works with... with Reach Heaven. So I think we don't take it. I'm, I'm having trouble finding a power to add, even though we have Mummified Hand. The Spirit Shield is actually pretty good with the Runic Pyramid. Let's take the Spirit Shield. And I don't normally like the Expunger. All right, we, we definitely need energy. Each one of these gives energy. This one means we get, no longer gain potions. This one means we cannot play more than six cards. This one means all of our enemies start the combat with one strength. I think Philosopher's Stone would kill us. So it's really between these two. Six cards in a turn is really easy, easy for us to do, especially because of Flurry of Blows. Not to mention all the ways we have to gain energy. Follow-up is one of those. The... If we actually go into Divinity Stance, that would be another, but whenever we leave Vigilance... Yeah, I think I think this would not be great. So we're taking Sozu. We can no longer obtain potions. We've just got that one potion. Alright, let's see if we can actually pull this one out. I have significant doubts. Significant doubts that this one is going to end. End with victory. I think we should avoid many fights. Avoiding many fights is a little bit hard with this act. We could we could go this way, but we would either fight an elite at the end, or we would fight three normal enemies. Three normal enemies is probably better than fighting one elite. Hard to say though, the normal enemies tend to do damage on the first turn, so... It's a hard option. We could avoid this elite and go here. But I think we avoid as many combats as we can. Because the combats will kill us when we skip our first turn. That's 16 damage or 12 damage because of the, the threaded needle, which has saved so much health. Wheel Kick gets played twice if we play it. That means that Eruption plus Wheel Kick does 80, 84 damage. That wins. Bam. <laughs> All right. It's nice to win on, on turn two. The Halt is quite nice. Especially with with Runic Pyramid. Runic Pyramid makes Halt much better. Let's take a Halt. So the 
the curse of normality is really bad. The curse of normality is so much worse when you have runic pyramid. Runic pyramid basically makes I am rich almost untakeable. I think the you can no longer heal would kill us pretty easily. So the only real option here is fight a boss from act one. The Guardian. The Guardian at least doesn't attack on turn one, so when we end turn, we don't immediately get hit. It does attack on turn two, though, and we'd have to do 30 damage to prevent this attack. The best way to accomplish that is with Cut Through Fate. Cut Through Fate shows us those two. All right, we don't want those. Well, I guess what we do is we play Spirit Shield and focus on blocking. So Spirit Shield gives us 27 block. Just Lucky gives us a little bit of block. I do like the Reach Heaven right there. And then follow up is free. We need to gain a little bit more block. There we go. Now we're blocking fully. And we can also draw five cards. So. Great second turn of the battle. His second turn, our first turn. I do like eruption here. We would need a way to get out of Wrath the following turn, I think. We've got three of them in the deck. It's just a matter of drawing one of those. But we also have Halt and Scrawl to help us draw those. So let's play the Eruption. A good time to play Reach Heaven, I think. The only problem is it does put two cards in our draw pile, but we've got the scrawl, so even if we draw those, it's not too bad. Do we play the scrawl now? I don't think so. We play it next turn when we need to. I think we play conclude. So, we start with Halt. Halt gives us block. Then we play Talk to the Hand. And then a Through Violence. We're basically making space in our hand right now. And for that matter, we could play two defends and block this entire attack because we've already got 12. So actually, let's let's stay in Wrath this turn. And we can even play a Bowling Bash. Great. Bully blocked that while in Wrath. So Prostrate is great to start with. We probably want to end this turn with Simmering Fury. And I guess we want to play Vigilance. So let's play Empty Fist and then Vigilance, I think. So Empty Fist does a bunch of damage. We could play Flurry of Blows, and then Vigilance, and then Flurry of Blows. If we did that, do we take damage? We don't. Great. We have 17 block. We could we can actually attack one more time. All right, and still fully block. All right, and then we win with wheel kick easily. Not bad, not bad. That was a pretty good boss to fight skipping the first turn as well. Normal enemies drop additional card rewards. A stance potion is excellent. I like seeing that. Oh, we don't get it. I forgot about the Sozu. <laughs> Never mind. Wallop. Wallop is great with Necronomicon. 
It's unfortunate that it's the only one that's not upgraded here, but I think we still take it because it works so well with Necronomicon. So, take Wallop. And we are trying to avoid battles. Hey, the Purifier. Let's remove a card from the deck. This is especially good because of Runic Pyramid. Get rid of some of the trash. Do we consider Defend or Strike the more trashy of the cards? Honestly, maybe Defend. Let's take out a Defend. We do have the Strike Dummy, by the way. The Strikes are better than normal. They do three additional damage. All right, we skip the first turn. We take 22 minus four, that's 18 damage coming in. Hello, Gale, welcome to the stream. And I, I do tend to talk a lot during these, but not nearly as much as I did in my over-explained runs. Those over-explained runs are a lot. This turn, clearly Bowling Bash is an excellent play because it does 24 damage. That's quite nice. Wallop is also good because we gain block. We would gain 20 block if we play Wallop. And we are taking a lot of damage, so that's very nice to do. I really want to play Wallop, Bowling Bash, and Conclude. Which we can do. The problem with it is that where do we send the wallop? Whoever we hit with the bowling bash, which will not be the center one, because it would hit us three times, is going to die from the conclude. Which means if we wallop if we wallop this one, we bowling bash the left one we end up killing both of those. And we end up with a lot more block than we really need. If we wallop the center one, we essentially only get eight block from wallop because it hits twice, does six damage back twice. And also we would take the damage before we deal it. All right, so we're, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do the wallop over here. Now we've got 20 block. The conclude is going to kill that one. Which means bowling bash, do we send to the middle one now? I think we still don't. But we can do the just lucky on the middle one. I like the cut through fate being on top. And we can do conclude. And we end up with enough Enough block to block it all. Prostrate, no reason not to play that. And as long as we gain enough block to not take damage, we can kill this one with the Brilliance and the Cut Through Fate. Nice. Hey, we can actually get Study. So Study, especially with it being upgraded already, is a great addition due to Mummified Hand. One comment there, however, is that if we play Study and Mummified Hand makes a two cost attack cost zero, like Wheel Kick, then we don't get the double play from Necronomicon. So it could actually have a, a negative effect for us. Also, do we really need the insights? I don't know if we really need the insights. I still want to take it because of Mummified Hand, though. I think the insights are good to have. Let's let's take Study. Ho ho, an upgraded Wallop. I will take another Wallop. Wallop is a great card with Necronomicon. 
Alright, skip the first turn. This is not the worst battle to skip the first turn. We didn't take damage the first turn, even though we skipped it. The Spirit Shield gives a bunch of block, and the Wallop gives the rest. I, I guess we're going to do that. Sure, Spirit Shield for most of the block. We really only need six more block, which we can only get through Wallop. So I guess we play Wallop. We've got our follow-up, which we could play now. We can also play Reach Heaven. Unfortunately, we have not drawn... Well, actually, we drew Simmering Fury. So maybe we set up a good Simmering Fury turn. A good Wrath turn next turn. Let's do that. So we're going to play Simmering Fury this turn. And then we basically just want to get rid of things in our hand. The things that don't deal as much damage, like Bowling Bash. And the follow-up for that matter. The Eruption. Is that worth it? No. It's not worth it when we're already going to be in Wrath. Okay, end the turn. We have the Halt for this turn, which is quite nice. Play the Halt first. That gets us a little bit of block. Reach Heaven is quite good. The Prostrate, of course, is good to play. Brilliance is excellent. Does a lot of damage. Let's start with Reach Heaven. And then, do we play Vigilance right now? I think we do. Let's play the Vigilance right now. That way we don't get damaged. We do not have a way to, to get into Wrath, do we? I guess let's start with Cut Through Fate and see what we can do. We can get the Wallop. Let's discard the Defend. We don't really want the Defend. We don't really care to play the Wallop this turn, but we'll play it in a future turn. Let's get rid of the Defend that that, that made free. And... I kind of want to save the Through Violence for when we're in Wrath, but when are we going to get into Wrath? I don't know that we will very soon, so let's not save it. And conclude. All right. We're kind of not doing well in this battle. Let's play the Talk to the Hand. That's guaranteed to do good things for us. And then it feels like we need to play Wallop. On the other hand, we could play Empty Body to gain some energy this turn. I do like that too. And I really want to play this Insight. Interesting, we could play Empty Fist. Either way, we're going to play Flurry of Blows before we play either of those. The wheel kick would draw four cards. So I think what we do is we play Empty Body. That gives us some energy and the Flurry of Blows back. Then we play... How many cards do we have in our hand? If we play the Through Violence first, then the Wallop will... or the Wheel Kick will fill our hand. Sure. If we play the Wheel Kick first, even though it fills our hand, we don't get to double play the Wallop. How bad is that? It's not that bad. It's not that bad, but I think we might want to play Wallop first, and maybe not play Wheel Kick this turn. Play the Wheel Kick a future turn. Which means we play the Strike and the Defend. 
Now we've got a pretty good hand. We just need a way to enter Wrath. Or for that matter, Divinity Stance. All right, let's go into Divinity Stance the first time. Prostrate into Divinity Stance. That makes all of our, all of our attacks deal triple damage. So Brilliance does 84. Great. There's another Just Lucky. The Just Luckies have been quite nice. That one is also upgraded. I don't think I want another follow-up. Our boss is Time Eater, so the, the Just Luckies are actually worse than they normally are because of Time Eater. Counting how many cards we play. I think we skip these. Oh, I like the Vault. Vault is also not great with Time Eater. Well, it actually it actually kind of is pretty good, as long as you play it as the 12th card, because Time Eater ends your turn, but then you get to play another turn anyway. And we can do that, because we've got Runic Pyramid to keep the Vault in our hand until we want to play it as the 12th card. Let's take that. All right, we surprisingly have pretty high health, so I'm going to smith. And there's lots of things I want to smith. For one, we could make the vault cost two instead of three, which is very significant. We could make the spirit shield give more block, which is pretty good. Smithing wallop is always very nice. I don't really care about smithing Reach Heaven, even though it adds a lot more damage. I think I'd rather smith the Wallop than the Reach Heaven. The Talk to the Hand is not a bad idea. Let's smith the Wallop. But I think Reach Heaven is next, if we smith again. And we might smith again. It really depends on how well we do in this elite fight. I like Rushdown. Rushdown is an excellent is an excellent power. Also goes well with the mummified hand. I would get Tantrum if we needed another way to enter Wrath, which I don't think we do. The Sling of Courage affects us very little. The Whetstone upgrades two random attacks, which, you know, that's not bad. We can't take the potions because of Sozu. Sozu would re prevent us from taking potions. I think I want the Whetstone and the Rushdown. Let's do that. Let's see what Whetstone hits. Cut through fate and just lucky. Not exactly what I would have chosen, but not the worst. All right, skip the first turn. Take 18 minus four, 14 damage. Ouch. And we didn't take care of any of the daggers yet. This is probably the one that we use our Explosive Potion in. Honestly, look at all that damage coming in. It's real bad. It's real bad for us. All right. Let's start with Prostrate. Next. Talk to the Hand is almost certainly a good option because it's a good way to gain block, especially if we pair it with a Bowling Bash. Although, what I want to hit with that is one of the daggers. Huh. <laughs> what do we do here? <laughs> this is pretty scary. 
skipping the first turn of this fight is, is kind of bad. So we've got two bowling bashes. Two bowling bashes could take out two daggers, even without the explosive potion. So let's start there, but we also play Talk to the Hand as essentially a block card. So we play the Talk to the Hand here. We play a Bowling Bash on that one. That gains us some block. Then we play Bowling Bash on this one, which defeats that one. And then we play our Explosive Potion. Right? Yeah, we play the Explosive Potion. And then we can take out this dagger with a simple strike. And then we still take... We still take how much damage? 22 damage? Alright. It's not good for us. We need a way to not die this turn. That's what we need most. I think that starts with playing Cut Through Fate. We play Cut Through Fate we figure out what we could draw to not die. Wallop is a great thing to draw to not die. You know, Spirit Shield is actually also really good. How much block does Spirit Shield give? 9 times 3 is 27. Let's take the Spirit Shield. Take the Wallop the following turn. Because the Spirit Shield gives 27 block, add that with a Defend, and we just block this turn. Alright, now we can play the Eruption, get into Wrath Stance, and then play Reach Heaven, double play Reach Heaven, and then play a Strike. And we've got a Halt and a Wallop to give us block next turn. So, let's start with Halt. The Wallop gives us 52 block. That's kind of a lot of block. That's great. Let's do that. And then, can we win this turn? It looks like we can. Alright, win this turn. Smiling Mask does basically nothing for us, because we don't have any merchants left, I don't think. We might, in the question mark rooms. Third Eye is not terrible, it does give block. Sash Whip is not terrible. Sash Whip is the first time we've found a way to gain, to apply weakness. But it's another attack in our deck. I think we might still take it, because... How do we beat the Time Eater? I think part of what we do to beat the Time Eater is deal damage really fast. And this is both damage and block, essentially. Alright, let's, let's take the Sash Whip. But I'm still worried about the Time Eater fight. A mango! Ho oh, ho! The mango is quite nice right here. Let's take the mango. And then we are definitely going to rest here. We need our... We need our health. Okay, the mango makes me feel a lot better about potentially beating Time Eater. This battle... This battle hurts. Turn 1 is 22 damage, minus 4. And turn 2 is even worse. Oh, but we've got the Wallop. Alright, Wallop makes that much nicer. I think we play a Talk to the Hand and a Wallop. So Wallop is going to do 26 damage, plus this 6 is... is 32... Plus a follow-up. 
so that's 40 damage. 40 damage, plus we're going to play a conclude. All right, we can take out the rightmost one with all of those things. Let's do that. And the conclude kills that one, so let's do the follow-up somewhere else on this one. And conclude. Great, great second turn. Our first turn, their second turn. Wheel kick is pretty excellent. Because it does 42 damage. So let's do the flurry of blows here, a wheel kick the wheel kick after playing the sash whip and then strike to win great could get another wheel kick don't think that's the most important could get a sanctity plus sanctity plus is a pretty good block card and we might need a good block card. I guess we're taking that. I don't know. What What's our plan again? <laughs> Fear no evil is pretty nice. That, that gives us another way to enter calm. What's our plan for defeating, defeating our boss? Is it really with Fear No Evil? Because the main thing that we get out of changing stances, other than M energy, is playing our zero cost card over and over again, a flurry of blows, which is not great in the Time Eater fight. I don't think we take any of these cards, actually. Because of Time Eater as our boss, I don't think those cards are what we need. We begin to fall. We could lose a defend. I am perfectly happy losing one defend. Defend is one of the worst cards in our deck. Hey, Designer Inspire, we've got 83. We can remove a gold, we could remove a card, we could upgrade two random cards. I actually really like the upgrade to random cards. We're definitely not going to punch him. Yeah, let's upgrade two random cards. Those are pretty decent random cards to upgrade. Okay, we skipped the first turn of the Nemesis fight. That means that we don't get to deal damage. Ooh. Ooh, this is quite bad. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, Wallop doesn't give us much block. It only gives us two block. So the block cards in our hand are Halt and Empty Body. We could play Vault in order to... in order to have another turn. We could do Rush Down Vault in order to try to find more cards that could gain block. I think that's worth it. Because I don't want to take 45 damage. Let's do Rush Down Vault. You made a strike free. I'm glad to play the strike. I don't want to play the halt. Ooh, we could play Sash Whip. But if we play Sash Whip, we don't get to play Vault. We can play Sash Whip next turn. Let's find a way to gain block. So we found a way to gain block. We can Eruption... Sash Whip, and Halt, and then end the turn with an empty body. Great. So, Eruption. Are we going to play Study? 
So let's think here. Eruption and Sash Whip, that's two. The Halt is zero cost. The Empty Body is three. And we're going to play a Defend. So we do not play the Study this turn. So Eruption, Halt. That gives us some block. We should have played the Sash Whip. Whoops. We needed to play the Sash Whip after playing after playing our our eruption. I played that out of order. Ouch. Now now we don't play the defend. Whoops. So Gail Gail commented that playing Vault hoping for defensive options giving me giving me eruption was funny, but it actually was perfect because we had we had already in our hand uh, what card am I looking for? I'm trying to point out what I what we had in our hand before. The zero cost block card that I can't see in my deck for some reason. <laughs> what? This one, Halt. We had Halt in our hand, so drawing the Eruption actually added 9 block. Plus, if we would have played our cards right, it would have also added 2 weak, along with the Defend that we drew. I just played the cards wrong. So I think now we have to skip the Defend, so we play... We play our worst attack card, which is Bowling Bash, so that we can play the Sash Whip applying too weak, and then we play Empty Body. And unfortunately, if I had played those correctly, we would have gained five more block and only taken two damage there, but I did that wrong. Talk to the Hand means that we can gain block pretty easily. Let's play the study this turn. And might as well well play wheel kick, right? Do we play the defend? No, we play it next turn. We'll just keep this hand. Alright, we'll start with the follow-up because that gains three block. And then we play a couple defends couple defends and a strike and then we're going to play simmering fury so we gain wrath for next turn when nemesis is not intangible great how much damage can we deal we should be able to deal a lot flurry of blows for example does some damage the wallop or the reach heaven Wallop does more. Also gains us a lot of block. The Brilliance does a lot. And then conclude concludes the battle, as it were. Horn Cleat gives us block on the second turn. Unfortunately, not the first turn. But still, it's better than nothing. I think we might want an empty body, but I I don't know. Let's skip. And we rest right before the final battle. Final battle. Let's see if we can beat this challenge. Let's see if we can beat the time eater. We have to skip the first turn. Take 32 damage on the first turn. All right. And then we can do stuff. What do we do now that we can do stuff? I certainly want to play Sash Whip, either this turn or next turn. I think this is a good turn to play Rush Down and Study. And then we play Brilliance. Actually, if we're going to play Simmering Fury, aren't we? 
So let's save the brilliance for next turn. So strike, sash whip, simmering fury, and conclude. Or save the conclude for next turn. Let's play the conclude. All right, we've got six plays. The talk to the hand is good, of course, but once you get Time Eater less than half health, he heals and he removes the talk to the hand effect, as well as any other debuffs. We want to play Brilliance this turn, and we want to play Empty Fist this turn. Do we play the talk to the hand? I think we do. How are we going to gain block? We want to gain block with empty body. If we play Vigilance Empty Body, that will give us some Ember, or not Ember, <laughs> energy back. I've been playing Monster Train, as you know. Um, so Vigilance and Empty Body essentially costs one to play. And then we could set up so that we play Vault next turn. So I think we are going to do a Vigilance and Empty Body. But before that, we play Empty Fist. Or Talk to the Hand. Let's play Brilliance. So Brilliance. And then we play Vigilance. Empty body. And then we get a couple more plays. Do we play a wheel kick or a cut through fate? I really want to play the cut through fate. Let's play on next turn. Having a spirit shield next turn is pretty nice. We don't care about the defend. Let's play let's play the follow-up this turn question mark if we play the follow-up this turn we get to trigger his end of turn this turn which is not too bad for us and then defend fully blocks because he's going to deal 30 damage to us right actually it's going to deal more because we're vulnerable oh well we'll take a little bit All right, we have the Spirit Shield. Spirit Shield is a lot of block. Start with Spirit Shield. That's 27 block. The Prostrate gives us the rest of the block that we need. And then... Probably a good a turn as any to play Insight, unless we play Wheel Kick. Let's play, let's play the insight. All right, so we've got eruption. We want to play eruption probably next turn. So this turn, let's just use some of the other things that we have in our hand. Flurry of blows and the bowling bash. Do I play the talk to the hand? I don't think so. Do I play Sanctity to get it out of the hand? Yes. Play Sanctity, get it out of the hand. Alright, excellent time to play Eruption when we are not being attacked. Start with Eruption? Certainly start with Eruption. And then we can play Wheel Kick. Wheel Kick does a lot of damage. Let's start with a Just Lucky. 
I actually want to get rid of both of those cards. Let's not draw those. Those are not as good in the Time Eater fight. And then... We don't need the wall up this turn. The Reach Heaven would be quite nice. But the Wheel Kick does a lot of damage this turn. Let's do the Reach Heaven. Let's put those through Violences in the deck. And then just like before, we can set it up so that we we end playing 12 cards exactly. So let's do that. And the last card we will play is a Strike. As Gail mentions, the Runic Pyramid does make, does make the Spirit Shield much better because you more often have a full hand of cards when you've got the Runic Pyramid holding cards in your hand. Wallop is the easiest way to gain block. However, it only affects unblocked damage, which means we have to take out the block first. So let's do that. Through Violence takes out the block. Then we gain a fair amount of block with Wallop, and then more with Halt. Yeah, let's do that. So that's a lot of block. That's 38 block. You are dealing 18 times 3, essentially, after we play Empty Fist, which we are certainly going to do. So 18 times 3, what does that mean for how much block we need? We need another, another 14 block. Just so happens that Halt gives 12. 12 is not exactly as much as I just said, though. Oh well. And let's Bowling Bash and Empty Fist. So I'm saving the Talk to the Hand, by the way, for, for the second phase, which we are very close to going into. Flurry of Blows doesn't really do much except get it out of the hand, which might be worth it. Sure, get out of the hand. So Time Eater is just going to heal this turn and remove all the debuffs. So what I really want to do is have a turn where I play Talk to the Hand and Vault, I think. Which means let's play... We want to play three cards. Defend is one of those cards. Insight is one of those cards. Simmering Fury is one of those cards, right? Yes, Simmering Fury is one of those cards. We have to be, be able to get out of Wrath, though. That might be hard. Oh, you know what? We are going to enter Divinity Stance next turn. Ooh. Entering Divinity Stance next turn is rather interesting. That makes me want to play three more cards this turn. Yes. All right. So we're going to play three more cards this turn because we're entering Divinity Stance next turn. So Flurry of Blows is one of those. Another Insight is probably another. And then a Strike is another. All right. So then Time Eater heals. We enter Divinity Stance. And now we're doing tons of damage. Wallop gains us a ridiculous amount of block. Brilliance does 81 damage on its own. Let's do the talk to the hand.
Brilliance, and then does Wheel Kick win? Wheel Kick wins. All right. There we go. All right, the Watcher won on Ascension 4. That's pretty impressive, I think. So Ascension 4, we have we have won without <laughs> without ever playing our first turn. We ended the turn immediately every first turn. And we were well fed. We increased our HP kind of by a lot, actually. We avoided a lot of battles. You can kind of see that with only 12 enemies slain. And, you know, the, the few elites that we fought, only five elites. But there we go. The Watcher wins on Ascension 4 skipping the first turn of every battle. All right, so now we get to try again with the defect. So that's that's who we're playing as next is the defect. The defect is going to have a much harder time than the watcher, I believe, but we'll find out. Also on Ascension 4, I don't trust going up to Ascension 5 just yet. We heal less after boss battles? I don't know. Let's go to Ascension 5. So Ascension 5 with the defect. This one will probably go much worse than the Watcher just did. That one went rather well. Let's start. And thanks, Gale. I I really am glad that I noticed that we were going into a divinity stance next turn because we were gaining one mantra. That really helped finish out that time eater fight. So the defect. Enemies in the next three combats having one health is not bad. Even though we skip the first turn, our cracked core would kill the enemies itself. Losing 7 max HP is not great. Transforming a card is pretty decent. And then I kind of like our cracked core. So I'm not really thinking about losing the starting relic for a random boss relic. I think we're going to choose either the transform a card option or enemies in the next three combats have one health, the Niao's Lament. Let's transform a card. And we really don't want those strikes. So transform a strike into a ball lightning. Large upgrade. Okay. How do we want to handle this act with the defect? I'm thinking that we go to that elite fight, go to this early shop, and then once we get here, we decide whether we're going left or right. Most likely we're going left, but if we get really lucky, we can go right. How about that? Seems like a pretty decent first act. So, skip the first turn, take 14 damage. Ouch. The Runic Pyramid was really nice to have, by the way. I liked having the Runic Pyramid with this particular challenge. I like the Runic Pyramid a lot of the time, but it was very nice here. I think we dual cast first here, because if we dual cast, we get to kill one of them for sure happened to be that one. And then we also kill this one. Great. Static discharge. You know, it's not bad. The problem is we don't get to play at turn one. <laughs> so even though we're taking a lot of damage, we don't really get to play that. The stack is much better if you play it turn one than if you play it turn two, or actually the opposite way. The stack is better not playing it the first turn. Don't know 
if I care too much about go for the eyes just yet. I mean, at the end of the day, I really do like static discharge. But I'm thinking about taking the stack. Let's take the stack. So there's a storm in this shop. We could go a heavy storm deck. There's also reprogram, and the reprogram is cheap. Reprogram is an interesting way to do a defect run. You go for for non-orb focus. Wouldn't mind doing that. We could even afford that with the card remove, is that correct? No, we couldn't. We could do reprogram and steam barrier. You know, I haven't done a, a reprogram run in a while. I really want to. Let's take reprogram and steam barrier. So now one of the things I really want to do is upgrade that reprogram. Because the reprogram gets much better up. Take 12 damage right here. No problem. This jawworm fight is not going extremely well. We could reprogram, but we kind of don't have the deck for it yet. So let's not play reprogram here. Let's play zap, defend, defend, steam barrier. We have to build the deck for reprogram to be as good as it can be. Strength potion, not too bad. Could get another steam barrier. I think I would rather have a steam barrier than the other two with a reprogram in my deck. But I would really like some attack card that works well with the reprogram. So we could get a full benefit out of this banana. It might allow us to take two elite battles too. I think that's worth it. Let's take the banana. Remove a card from the deck. Excellent. Let's remove probably probably dual cast. Let's remove dual cast. That really does set us down the reprogram path, by the way. Taking out dual cast this early basically means that we really have to go reprogram. So, let's smith our reprogram. That loses two focus, much more significant, but also gains two strength and two dexterity. And you can play it multiple times. This is not a power, and it does not exhaust itself. That's why reprogram is so fun. All right, skip the first turn. Unfortunately, we're losing our reprogram. In this battle, our stack is particularly good. Not that we have it right now. And I think we do use this strength potion. Let's use the strength potion. What are we do? What are we doing ball lightning on? Let's go on the sentry. And then we're we're definitely playing a defend this turn, right? Yes, we're playing a defend this turn. And then a strike and we're done. There's our stack. Terrible time to get the stack. <laughs> We've got all of this dazed but we got the stack when we have nothing in the discard pile. All right, well, that's how it is sometimes. So, defend, strike, and zap. 
Th this particular battle, we've drawn our cards in pretty much exactly the wrong order. So this battle is going very poorly. I don't think we're going to take that second elite battle. And reprogram is far too late. Far too late. Let's do the ball lightning first. We could reprogram right now. It means that these three lightning orbs that we just put out are going to do less. However, the defend is going to be much better. Let's do that. And we know we can block this turn because we've got the steam barriers and we've got stack. <laughs> All right, well, the stack actually works this time. Even though we had nothing in our discard pile. So another reprogram. It'd be nice if if we could defeat that front one, though. At least we can defend nine. Okay. Defeat that one. Damage this one. We did actually deal four damage with the lightning because because I, we haven't gone down so much focus that we don't deal damage with the Evoke. And Strike wins. All right, we, we got out of that battle with a lot of damage. And we got a Darkstone Periap. One relic that really doesn't do much for us. So we didn't really get rewarded much either. I like the Sweeping Beam. The Sweeping Beam is really nice. Let's take that. That's a pretty decent attack card. We might die in this next battle, <laughs> floor eight. By the way, we're taking four damage in the first turn. You know, it's not the worst. We might survive this battle then. Steam barrier, defend, defend, blocks fully. So we're going to do that. Even though it means we don't defeat this acid slime this turn. But when you have nine health, you have to make choices. So reprogram is quite nice here because we need we need the block. So we can do. Yeah, we can do the steam barrier, a strike here and a stack. And then we should be able to take you out. Great. We survived that battle, but let's be honest, we're at nine health and we skipped the first turn of every battle. Another sweeping beam isn't terrible. Let's take another sweeping beam. Art of War, not the best. <laughs> All right. I don't think this one is going very far. We need to go left. And you kill us on the first turn. It's so sad. <laughs> the defect did not get very far. All right, well, let's just run that one right back. So let's try the defect again. I'm staying on Ascension 5, but you know, as you can see, that one did not go well. So run it right back. The defect, Ascension 5, we have to skip the first turn of every battle. And, you know, let's do... Let's do the Niao's Lament this time. Ho-ho, oh, look at this. Four question marks in an elite. That could be really nice. With N Niao's Lament. Let's do it. Skip the first turn of the battle, we still win. Explosive Potion is not too bad. By the way, according to my rule set, the Explosive Potion is something that I cannot use on the first turn. I have to just end turn. I cannot use potions either. 
I kind of like every one of these options, but Defragment. Defragment is an excellent thing to have on the Defect. Even though I also kind of want to start with a Darkness, let's, let's go Defragment. That opens up a lot of different things that we could do well. Oh, a shop. We could take a storm. One of the problems with taking storm is that the upgrade to storm actually makes it much, much worse when you have to skip the first turn of every battle. <laughs> so an upgraded storm is actually terrible for us. And Zombified Potato, welcome to the stream. The stream is going great. We actually won with the Watcher on Ascension 4 already. So we're doing quite well. I've already set a new personal best for this challenge. I really do like the Recycle. And it's on sale. Let's take the Recycle on sale. And then maybe a card remove strike. Or play Cold Snap. Let's card remove a strike. Great, we kind of have an orb deck in the mix right now. Oh, I could remove another strike. I kind of like that. Upgrading a card is also quite good, but what if we just remove a whole lot of strikes? Let's remove more strikes. We don't need strikes. We've got we've got our lightning orbs. We even got a chest. Wow. <laughs> With an art of war. All right. One of the nice things about art of war in this particular challenge is that we skip the first turn of every battle, which means the second turn, we've got one more energy. It's kind of like the lantern the lantern for this challenge. You know, I'm going to skip the second turn of this battle, too. There we go. Win. I really like hologram. It's another thing that I want to upgrade, but I really like hologram. Let's take it. And here's our elite that we get to just skip the first turn, still take 10 damage, but then probably win this turn. There we go. We got the boot, which is kind of pointless for us. Swift potion, which can be quite good. And we're not doing reprogram this time. We have not built the deck for that. Let's take Glacier. Excellent block guard. All right, the Jaw Worm deals us 12 damage. That's more than the, the Elite just dealt us. Do I want to recycle a Defend? Let's recycle a Defend. Oh yes, this this is going much better. For one, our last run, I think, died on floor 9. And we're on floor 7, doing just fine. Floor 9, no. We died that floor, whatever that floor is. I think we will do much better than that this time. So we could play Defend, Hologram, Defend. And the question is, would we rather have the extra energy next turn or play the Strike this turn? I think playing the Strike this turn, dealing one damage, it's not worth the extra energy. We could play the, the Recycle, though, and get rid of the Strike. I like that. We, we actually would have dealt five damage, by the way, because of the boot. But I did not think of that. Defragment, Zap, and Dual Cast almost wins. 
And then dual cast would win if we had the orb that we needed, which we don't. So we'll just do it in a following turn. Actually, we don't win this turn either. <laughs> Let's get rid of one of these defense. We win this turn with the strike. The strike plus the lightning orb wins this turn. That was a very long jawworm fight that we did just fine in. I do really like genetic algorithm. It's early enough that it's quite good. I also like the other two options, but I think the genetic algorithm is what we want. Let's take genetic algorithm. It's terrible right now, but it gets better fast. And then what do we smith? One of the options is the genetic algorithm because the earlier that you smith that, the better. But also we really want to smith hologram and defragment for this deck to really work, for it to really shine. I think I will, I will be greedy though. Let's get the genetic algorithm so that it permanently increases more. We got a pair, increasing our max health by 10. Always nice. Excellent one to skip our first turn because it's not attacking us either. I will put out Glacier to get two Frost Orbs. I don't really want to wake it up, so I don't want to play the Zap just yet. Also, we want to play gene Genetic Algorithm before waking up the beast, so let's wait. Because our Genetic Algorithm sucks right now, so let's play it and gain the one block. We'll play Defragment, of course. And then what? We could recycle the Defend. We don't deal a whole lot of damage, is the thing. We never really got a good damage card, other than our orbs. I think we will recycle the defend. We don't want that many defends in the deck. All right, here we are. We've done basically nothing so far, but we can finally dual cast that lightning orb, glacier to block everything and strike once. It's not a great start to the battle, but it is a start. We certainly want to play Zap, so we have another Lightning Orb out there. And two defends blocks, at least. I think we Glacier... Glacier dual cast. And we could get rid of this defend as well. Glacier dual cast. And then recycle the defend. We can't really hologram anything. Let's recycle the defend. We could even play the hologram just to get rid of it. Let's do that. Let's get a really thin deck. So thin deck time. That way we get the Glacier basically every turn, which would be pretty nice to get. Probably should have played the Zap first. I should have played the Zap first. Since we're going getting dual cast next turn, should have played the Zap first. I'm going to continue thinning this deck. The defends are going to be quite bad eventually. 
so we want to play a dual cast to get some block and a zap and then sure play these strikes We should recycle one of these cards. Do we recycle the defend or the strike? I guess the defend is going to deal less faster. So let's recycle this defend. And then play the glacier, deal some damage, put the lightning orb in front. Alright, and I think we win this turn. We do. Alright, that was a pretty decently clean elite battle. Happy Flower gains energy every three turn. I always like a Happy Flower. Do we want Claw? I mean, it's fine. Claw is fine. Stack is kind of terrible. Sure, let's let's take one Claw, I guess. The taking the one claw does work poorly with the art of war, by the way. <laughs> so that was one reason to not do that, but we did that anyway. Oh, 50 gold to remove another card from the deck. Let's remove another strike. I mean, we need we need something that does damage, though. Sure, let's keep removing the strikes. You know what? We might need something that does damage, but we're getting it somewhere else. <laughs> we'll remove... Let's remove the last strike. <laughs> All right, the strikes are gone. We have no strikes in the deck. Match and keep. All right, we need, we need a good card that does damage. Preferably one that gives us orbs. Panic button is not that. There's another hologram. It's unupgraded. Sunder does a lot of damage. Parasite would be bad. Bias Cognition could be quite good. We could get a panic button if we want. I don't think I want it. I also don't want the parasite. <laughs> There's another zap. Okay, I think, I think we might want to take the Sunder. Let's take the Sunder. We did get a damage card. And we skip the first turn, take 18 damage. Ouch. That hurts. Sunder could kill the Louse. I think we Sunder the Louse. And then we claw you. This is probably the best time to do genetic algorithm in this battle. And dual cast, of course. Let's play the zap first, followed by our glacier. And then let's recycle one of these defense. And the Sunder wins. With the Lightning Orb, of course. A Block Potion. Not bad. Remember that I cannot play those in the first turn, though. The Compile Driver. Compile Driver essentially draws two cards. That's quite nice. We pretty regularly get two different types of orbs out. And I think that we have to rest here, don't we? I mean, we also kind of really want the defrag upgraded. I'm not going to rest. I'm going to upgrade the defrag. If we upgrade the defrag, then we might do just fine in the next battle. This is not the worst boss that we could face. I mean, none, none of the Act 1 bosses actually attack on the first turn, by the way. It's kind of an interesting thing that I don't really notice until I do a challenge like this. But none of the Act 1 bosses attack on the first turn. So 
you don't take damage if you just skip your first turn. At least, not on the first turn. We have a lot of... of energy this turn, thanks to Art of War and Happy Flower together. We also have our Hologram. And we can dual cast after defragging. So we could dual cast and sunder to switch you over to the defensive phase. I think that's worth it. Sunder, dual cast. Especially since we know we've got the Glacier this turn. Glacier, we cannot play the Sunder. But we can get rid of a defend, which we want to do. Get rid of those defends. Is this the genetic algorithm turn? I think it is. Genetic algorithm. Zap. Would we rather play hologram or compile driver? I think we'd rather play compile driver. Pile driver. We have to play one of these one of these defends in order to not take damage this turn. I'd prefer to not take damage this turn. So let's play a defend. I guess we could have also played a dual cast. Compile driver is a good first thing to do draws two cards. We can always play Claw. We could Sunder. The problem with Sunder is that... Oh, actually, the Lightning Orb... <laughs> Sunder plus the Lightning Orb does switch the Guardian to Defensive Stance again. Great. And then Glacier is great here because it puts the Lightning Orb in front and gives us tons of block. We can also recycle another Defend. Our deck is slowly thinning. We want to play Hologram first, get back the Glacier, I think. Hologram, get back the Glacier. We could play the dual cast, but if we played the dual cast, we couldn't play the glacier because the way we'd get the dual cast is with the compile driver. So let's play claw and then glacier and then a zap. Have we taken any damage in this battle? Not yet anyway. We can dual cast that Frost Orb. And now we're fully blocking. Claw is getting stronger. Pile Driver, do we want to recycle anything in our hand? We kind of need the Zap because we have no other source of Lightning Orbs. We don't really want the defend, but we kind of do want at least one defend in the deck. And we're we're getting down to the point where there's only two. Let's still recycle the defend. And then of course we play Sunder. Dual cast this Frost Orb. Gives us block. And then we can Claw. Claw is getting very strong. Do we get rid of the Sunder at this point? No. We keep the Sunder. Glacier gives us block. It gives us not quite enough block, though. Can we win this turn is the other question. If we compile driver and we get Sunder, 
I think we win. If we compile driver and we don't get Sunder, do we also win? I think we also win. So compile driver. We did not get Sunder, but we still win. Because dual cast plus claw. Great. That went very well. Electrodynamics. I do like Electrodynamics. Another way to gain lightning orbs, and lightning hitting all the enemies is quite good. Let's take it. I like it more than the other two. Pandora's Box. We only have the four defense left. We've been really removing our starting deck, so Pandora's Box doesn't do much. The Coffee Dripper means we could no longer rest at rest sites. I think that would be terrible with this challenge. Without any other way of healing, I think we would die if we cannot rest at rest sites. So I think it's really Cursed Key. Let's take Cursed Key. Cursed Key gives us an extra energy at the start of each turn. However, whenever we open a non-boss chest, we get a curse, which is quite bad. Quite bad. To the point that you don't really want to open the chests. Where do we go this act? We're going to start with a shop, no matter what we do. I think I want to go here, because we want to do upgrades. And this gives us enough fires that we can guarantee do an upgrade, even if we need to heal at one of them. So let's start here. Oh man, this is a terrible turn to just skip the turn. It's so sad. Oh well. That's what happens. Have to skip that turn. <laughs> Our genetic algorithm is getting much stronger. We should start with Compile Driver, because let's draw a card first. And Genetic Algorithm blocks. Defend, defend, defend. Sure. Do I want to use one of these potions in this battle? Maybe the Explosive Potion, but not yet. Ooh. Well... Are they going to steal our money? They might steal our money. We didn't get the electrodynamics back in time. But the explosive potion doesn't really do anything. Maybe the swift potion is what we do. Let's do a swift potion and try not to lose our money. So play the swift potion. Unfortunately, the only thing that we drew of value is the compile driver, so let's play that. There we go. There's what we needed. Electrodynamics. Now we can play dual cast and hit them pretty hard. Do we do a, a zap first? I think we do a zap first. Then we dual cast. And the first one is dying, the back one... I think we can still defeat. Because we've got Sunder. Great. I think playing the potion was worth it. We got 60 gold back. I think we may have gotten zero back if we didn't play the potion. Do I want chaos? I kind of do. Getting a second claw is not terrible. I usually don't want to have more than two claws in a deck, even a deck that likes claws. I think we want the chaos. It really helps with Compile Driver, especially since we didn't get many ways to add orbs. So let's get the chaos. This is another card that I want to upgrade though, because it doubles its effect when upgraded. So we, we have still too many cards to upgrade. The Chosen. Unfortunately, we do take 12 damage by skipping the first turn. 
And then we can play a Defragment, an Electrodynamics, and a Chaos? Or do we play Sunder instead? I think we play Sunder. 24 damage. The Claw would cause us to... Oh, non-attack cards, right. It's the opposite. So the, the Claw is definitely being played. I guess we defend, defend, and dual cast, and next turn is going to not be fun. Because we're going to have two dazed in our hand, three dazed in our hand if we dual cast. Let's not dual cast. Thirty-one damage coming in. That's painful. Genetic algorithm definitely. Compile driver definitely. Claw definitely. Now, I think we do play the chaos, and then either one of these is a good potion to use. I think I'm going to use the explosive potion. That gets it so that we. We get a kill this turn, and we don't take 31 damage. But I'm kind of sad that we're using our potions so much. Barrage is not bad. Let's take a barrage. Alright, what do we have? We have Dolly's Mirror for sale. I think that's worth it. So, Dolly's Mirror copies a card in your deck. And luckily, it copies it with the upgrade already on. So we can copy Defrag, and we'll already have the upgrade to Defrag. We could also copy Genetic Algorithm and already have the 16 block on it. But I think I really want the Defrag. So now we've got two upgraded Defrags in the deck. Hey, find some potions. I was running out. Cultist potion. What boss are we fighting? You know, it's still probably good against that boss. Do we want an explosive potion or liquid memories? Probably liquid memories. Liquid memories is surprisingly useful with this challenge because if you if you lost something the first turn, you can get it back for the second turn. Ha ho, he's not attacking. The snake plant is not attacking on the first turn. We get a free turn. Now, now we have to block though. We can play genetic algorithm, which blocks some. What do we have in our discard pile? Not too much that I'd like to get back. We're definitely playing genetic algorithm this turn. We are playing Claw. Claw does five damage because of the boot. We're playing Hologram. Are we playing another Defend after the Hologram? We're going to get a Defend back. It's just a question of whether we play it or we play the Chaos. I think we play the Defend. And, of course, the Electrodynamics. And Claw. Okay, so we're taking a little bit of damage. Seven damage. Just a little bit, I say. Compile Driver draws us a card. That drawn card could be Glacier, which is what I want it to be. Let's see if it is. It is. It is a Glacier. Exactly what I wanted it to be. Let's play Glacier. Let's defrag. We should have defragged before playing Glacier. Just realized that was out of order. And should we play our block potion this turn? No, because it doesn't give us the full 12. There's another defrag. 
we want to play Barrage and Compile Driver. Because of the malleable, I'm going to play Compile Driver first. And we're going to play Zap before we play the Barrage. All right, and we should win this turn. We we do. We just click end turn, and we win. Entropic Brew, excellent. Kind of makes me wish I had played the block potion though. Let's get rid of the liquid memories for the Entropic Brew. Ooh, another glacier. I would gladly take another glacier. I want the glacier so much more often than it appears in my hand. And unfortunately, we have to rest. It's it's sad, but we really do have to rest. So, do we go normal enemy or elite enemy? I think we go elite enemy. Book of Stabbing, the one that I least wanted to see, honestly. <laughs> end, end my turn, first turn. We got two wounds already. We have six energy this turn. That's quite a lot. We can get a defragment back. I like the defragment. Let's start there. So hologram gets me a defragment. Play the defragment. Play the glacier. Now barrage does a lot more. And we are fully blocking. Genetic Algorithm also fully blocks this turn. Do I want to play Sunder or Defrag? Good question. Because I could play Defragment and the Zap. But Sunder does 24 damage. Let's do the 24 damage when we can. Sunder is also something I want to upgrade. I want to upgrade a lot of cards, if you haven't not noticed that. <laughs> I want to upgrade too many cards. Let's play a Glacier, and then we can... We could dual cast one of those. How much block do we have currently? That's 12... 26. We're getting 28. Let's just play a Defense. Could have also played the Electrodynamics. We can recycle the wound. Let's play the Compile Driver first, because it draws us a card. And then Glacier, and then Defend, and then Recycle a Wound. Okay, we're kind of winning this too slow. That's the main problem here. We're winning too slowly. Defragment plus Chaos plus Zap. How much block is that? That is 30 block. I mean, technically a defend blocks fully, but also the barrage does a lot of damage. And we might need the damage more than the defense. Yeah, let's let's try to finish this battle. Because the problem is, it's just going to keep doing more damage every single turn. And we're going to run out of the ability to deal with that. Quite quickly, in fact. Dual cast, defend, and zap. So we've got 29, you are doing 42. Excellent time to use a block potion. And I believe we might win this turn, which is which is good. We needed to win this turn, basically. Good. We win this turn. That was a difficult elite battle. We got a Duvu doll. I mean, we don't really care about strength that much, so Duvu doll is not amazing. Gambler's Brew is quite nice. We could get another defragment.
I think we will take another defragment. <laughs> All right. Gale has come to a new appreciation of, of recycle. Uh, definitely. Recycle is even better with with a smith, by the way. If you smith recycle, then it goes to zero cost. And the other aspect of recycle that's important to note is that X cost cards are really good with recycle. If you recycle an X cost card, it gets you whatever your current energy is in value. So recycle can be quite good. I think we need to rest here. Rest again. I think we do need to rest again. Let's rest. <laughs> We're resting kind of a lot. If we take this, we get a curse. That would also give us one strength. And we don't have a shop anytime soon <laughs> that we know of. I think we're going to open this one, but I, I usually don't recommend it. It's partially better because I have the recycle in my deck. I really need I really need a relic that does good things for me though. Let's do it. We got a writhe. That's not the worst. It's in eight, which means it it's in my opening hand, which is, you know, the hand that I don't play. So, whatever. We got a pen nib. Pen nib could be quite good when we have Sunder and Barrage. Basically, we want to set it up so that the Pen Nib happens on one of those and doubles one of those attacks. I actually really like the Pen Nib. And we are going here. I think that we Smith, and we really need to Smith one of Chaos or Hologram. Let's Smith Chaos. That makes Chaos actually a worthwhile card. And let's go to this other this other rest site. So we skip this first turn. Luckily nobody's attacking us this first turn. And then people are attacking us this turn. It's very sad. Do we want to do a gambler's brew? I think we do. I think we want a Gambler's Brew. We don't really care for the Barrage. The Compile Driver is not terrible. Let's, let's just Gambler's Brew this whole hand. Give me a different hand. Alright, Electrodynamics is not bad. The Dual Cast... As long as it hits that one twice, which we we could guarantee with Electrodynamics, but if we did that, we can no longer play Sunder. I guess we Electrodynamics and Defend, Defend, Dual Cast. It's painful. We're taking damage. All right, there's our glacier. We've been looking for that glacier. Let's play the defrags first. Defrags plus glacier. This might also be a good time to get our genetic algorithm in this battle. Gains us enough block for this turn. And we get to play at this battle. I mean, this is an easy turn, right? We just defend... Claw Barrage. We can even recycle the Dazed, which does exactly nothing, so we won't do it. Let's Chaos before we Glacier. 
Chaos and then Glacier. We are fully blocking. And we've got a Lightning Orb in front. Both of those are good things, although we just sundered, sunder for victory. Distilled Chaos, not a bad one to have. Should we get Tempest? Should we get Tempest? We have some turns that we just have a lot of energy because of Happy Flower and Art of War, which makes the Tempest a lot more doable. Also, Electrodynamics makes it kind of nice. Let's take the Tempest. All right, skip the first turn, take 12 damage. It hurts. It hurts every time. We did get our Electrodynamics. That's very nice. So let's defragment Electrodynamics. Compile Driver. Hope for a block card. Hope for a block card that we can play, <laughs> which we... We can't do with that one. All right. Well, too bad. The Tempest is quite good here, you know. Tempest does five of these. That's that's a lot of damage. Should we barrage this one first? Yes. Let's barrage you and then play the Tempest. And then win. Great. Blessing of the Forge. I'm surprised we didn't use those potions, but I don't think we care for the Blessing of the Forge more than those. I don't think we want these cards. No, we don't want them. All right, let's heal up. Rest again. Resting is good. We get a shop. The shop has a steam barrier. It has a blizzard, which we don't really gain enough frost orbs for the blizzard to be worthwhile. I think all we do at this shop is do the card remove service. But what do we re we remove? I think we remove defend. No, we remove writhe, of course. What am I thinking? Remove writhe. And then... Sadly, do we need to rest again? I really don't want to. I want to upgrade Hologram. I think upgrading Hologram is better than a rest here. So let's Smith Hologram. And then this next battle is going to be hard. We could die here. Let's find out. So, turn one. We end turn. Everybody does nothing. Wait a minute. You, you summoned two guys. You cheated. I think we want to play the Cultist Potion this battle. Do we also play the Distilled Chaos? I don't know, but we definitely play the Cultist Potion. I want the Chaos from my discard pile. Let's hologram and get the Chaos. Defragment, of course. Chaos. And now we can play Barrage. On one of those. They're going to take my Electrodynamics. That's very sad. The Electrodynamics is what we wanted to play. Do we play the Dual Cast? Of course we do. Oh, it hit that one. That's the one that's taking my electrodynamics, too. We 
we have a lot of energy this turn, so we can play Defragment, Glacier, and Compile Driver. Let's start there. Glacier, Compile Driver. We're hitting you. Unfortunately, we can't use that Sunder. Do we claw you? I guess we do. And we got our... our... Electrodynamics back. I really wanted to save this genetic algorithm for a future turn. But do we play it here because there's a lot of damage coming in? Really hard to say. The other thing that we could do is play this Distilled Chaos. Let's play the Distilled Chaos. Let's see what that does for us. It got us Electrodynamics. That's quite nice. Okay, that, that one worked out quite well. So now we've got some block. We don't need to play the Genetic Algorithm this turn. Let's play the Zap. And we're going to claw you. The pen nib is now active. Let's go. Haha, all right. So both Sunder and Barrage are here and they do extra damage. So 18 times three. 18 times three, how much is that? That's 54. Same thing as, as Sunder. The Lightning Orb is killing that one, so we don't need to spend any energy on that one, unless we just want to. So let's do the Barrage here. And the Sunder here. And then this is the turn where we need our our big block card, which we can get. So genetic algorithm, we can get that with the hologram. There we go. We got our big block card on the turn that we needed the big block card. Very important. Next, compile driver draws three cards. Let's play that. We can recycle a card. We could recycle Zap, for example. We don't really need Zap that much. Let's do that. And then do we play the Glacier so that we have more block? I think we do. It does use the Dark Orb, which was both good and bad. But we did fully block the Hyper Beam, which is a very important aspect of defeating the Bronze Automaton. Let's Defragment and Dual Cast. And I think we Glacier for next turn. I see a Claw and a Barrage. Both of those are quite nice. Chaos does something. And then... We're going to play Hologram, since the Sunder doesn't just win. What are we going to Hologram? If the Sunder won, we would play the Sunder. But it doesn't win, so we play something else. We play a Compile Driver, of course. And then, ho ho, we can, we can recycle the Sunder. If Recycle was upgraded, we could win this turn, by the way. Unfortunately, we can't. Oh, we, we can't. All right. We recycle the Sunder so that we get all of this, all of this energy. And then we dual cast 
that, so we gain block. And now we've got block for next turn, too. Which we don't need for this turn, of course, but still. The compile driver is there. Let's get the compile driver. Draw a couple cards. And barrage. Great. Made it past Act 2. Without ever playing anything in the first turn. Skipping every first turn with the defect. We've got a Meteor Strike. I think we could use a Meteor Strike in this deck. Let's take Meteor Strike. I mean, Echo Form is also really nice. But let's take a Meteor Strike. Ho-ho, <laughs> the Runic Pyramid shows its face once again. I think we take the Runic Pyramid. It's quite nice with Recycle as well. Just keep the Recycle until you need it. Yeah, Runic, Runic Pyramid is wonderful. Let's take that again. The Runic Pyramid helped the Watcher achieve victory. Let's see if it works for the Defect too. So, Act 3. Just like with the Watcher, we kind of want to fight as little as possible in Act 3. Especially since we have no passive healing. So let's start here. We're going to skirt past this elite right here. The shapes. The shapes are not so bad when you are the defect and rely on orbs. Because the spiker is quite bad with pretty much every other character. But with the defect, you just let the orbs kill the spiker. We have to end this turn. I don't know why I was thinking about the first turn. We end those turns. Now then. I think we want to... You know, this dazed is bothering me. Here we go. I think we want to play the Glacier. So, Defrag Glacier. That's a good start. Next. Do we play another Glacier? I think we do. Unfortunately, this one's going to explode soon, but maybe we can take it out with a Barrage. We have a Claw. We've got a Barrage and a Sunder. Let's do that. Barrage plus Sunder takes that one out. And then we still have five energy, so we can play Tempest for five. Tempest for five. And claw you. Actually, let's claw this one. That used our pen nib. I did not notice the pen nib being used there. Oh well. And Electrodynamics probably wins. Great. We need none of that. Skip those cards. Skip this first turn. We take 12. So we could recycle Meteor Strike to play Tempest. That's one option. We could also recycle Tempest and play basically everything in our hand. I think I'd rather Recycle Tempest. So, Recycle Tempest, now we've got 10 energy. And then what do we do with our 10 energy? We play a Defragment, we play a Glacier. That means we can Compile Driver for a fair amount. And then we can... Dual Cast and Meteor Strike. Seems pretty good. Dual Cast, Meteor Strike. Meteor Strike you. And we are fully blocking. And Claw you as well. And now we have lots of energy for next turn too. So naturally what you do after you play 
Meteor Strike is you play Hologram Meteor Strike. Hologram Meteor Strike. We can Sunder somebody. Let's Meteor Strike and Sunder. And kill the center one, I think. Yeah, Meteor Strike and Sunder the center one. And we can Defrag, Defrag, Zap. Defend, defend. We still have our genetic algorithm, which is great. We start with electrodynamics. And then we chaos. And then we play genetic algorithm so that we play it this battle. Because it feels like we're going to win this turn. Great. I don't think I want darkness anymore. Do we want sweeping beam? I don't think I want sweeping beam either. So we just skip. And then we go to this shop. Oh man, I would have loved the runic capacitor. We're three gold short of getting runic capacitor. I'm so sad. Runic Capacitor would work so well in the deck that we have, but we don't get it. What we do get is Doom and Gloom or another Sunder for some reason or Dark Shackles. The problem with Dark Shackles is that we don't add any other status effect to enemies. So, for example, Dark Shackles would do nothing against the boss because they start with artifact charges. So Dark Shackles actually doesn't do much. I don't mind white noise. Could also card remove. Card remove another defend. I think we card remove another defend. Card remove a defend. All right, move on. The shapes, except one of the shapes is bigger. So playing Glacier and Compile Driver draws us two cards, but we probably want to play the defragments. We do want to play the defragments, but we can also claw. Oh no, I did not skip the first turn. All right. The way to the way to go back to this is we essentially quit here. So we're going to quit. That should well, I'm not exactly sure. So we're going to we're going to close this, reopen, and we're going to start that battle over and actually skip the first turn of the battle so that we don't we don't invalidate that run. <laughs> All right. Remember to skip the first turn of the battle. I hope that I didn't make that mistake any other battle. I don't think I did, but let's do that. So I'm waiting for this to show. Okay, so now now we're back at the first turn of the battle, and this time we skip the first turn as we're supposed to. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Sometimes I have to remind myself about the rules of the challenge, as it were. So now that we're at the second turn of the battle, we could do the same thing that we were planning to do before. We definitely want to play Glacier. We definitely want to play the Defragments. I'm not sure that we want to Compile Driver. 
We are going to claw this one. We're currently taking five damage. We could avoid that if we just play a defend. So I guess we just play defend. We really need our electrodynamics. Also getting that genetic algorithm is quite nice. We can play Sunder to kill that one. I like that, let's start there. Sunder to kill this one. Then we Compile Driver the big one. And then Genetic Algorithm. Sure, genetic algorithm this turn. And then we could hologram and get back a card for next turn, like the Sunder. We could get back the Sunder for next turn. We do have Pen Nib activated, so Sunder is going to be rather good. Let's get back the Sunder. And let's play a Defend just to make space in the hand, I think. On that note, we could play dual cast instead. Now let's play a defend to get that out of the hand. I want the recycle for next turn, by the way. So, we can recycle Tempest, get lots of energy. We can play Meteor Strike, double the Meteor Strike. Let's do that. So Meteor Strike gets doubled. And then the Sunder takes you out. And then we can Electrodynamics, Chaos, and Barrage. Barrage would deal us damage. We dual cast and zap. And then we win in two turns. There we go. A focus potion, excellent. Skim is not bad. Skim is rather good when we can gain as much energy as we do. On the other hand, we could do the Skim Light, the Cool Headed, which also gives us a Frost Orb. I think I really like Skim. Let's take Skim. We're falling again. We could lose Zap. Do we want to lose Zap? I mean, now that we've got Chaos, we've got a much better Zap. Yeah, I would be perfectly happy removing one of our starter cards. Let's remove Zap. Great. And Smith. What are we smithing? We want to smith the defragment. We want to smith recycle. Let's smith recycle. Let's make that a zero cost card. I think that helps kind of a lot for that to be zero cost. We, we could pay 34 gold to get this relic. I think that's worth it. We offer all 34 of our gold to gain the red mask. Great. Very nice how that works out. We could lose our focus potion to gain a relic. I kind of like the focus potion. I think we are going to do none of these. We're just going to attack him. Because I, I don't want to lose a glacier either. Yeah. Let's let's attack Randwin. What a jerk you are sometimes. And then where are we going from here? I think we want to go this path. And I don't think we open this. Because it has a curse in it. Let's skip it. The transient. Ooh, skipping the first turn of the transient battle. That hurts. <laughs> 30 damage. 27 because of our lightning orb. All right. 
Well, now we really have to do stuff to win. We have our Meteor Strike. We've got the Defrags. Let's do the Defrags. I spent the energy that we could spend on the on the Meteor Strike, didn't I? All right. Well, sad. <laughs> that was that was not the best. We should probably play the Tempest. Let's play Tempest. That solves this turn. It's just the future turns that we still need to solve. We could play Genetic Algorithm for 34 block. It's a lot, but it's also not enough. Still, it's good. Let's play the Genetic Algorithm. Let's play the Defrag. And then Electrodynamics just does two Lightning. Still good. Two Lightning. And we fully block this turn. Next turn, what do we do? 70 damage coming our way. We did not draw our Recycle yet. We can probably cause ourselves to draw our Recycle. Let's play Chaos. That means that Compile Driver draws three cards. We want to play a card first. But what? The Barrage, I guess? And then Compile Driver. There's our Recycle. We don't need it this turn. Because we could dual cast this Lightning Orb this turn. Dual cast the Lightning Orb this turn. Or we could Hologram... Hologram Barrage? I like that more. Hologram Barrage. And then next turn, we've got the Recycle. We can Recycle Meteor Strike, for example. Let's Recycle Meteor Strike. Recycle Meteor Strike. And then we don't have any card that just adds one orb, do we? We don't. So there's no way for us to dual cast this dark, dark orb unless we dual cast the lightning orb and then we draw a dual cast again. Which is a possibility because we are going to play skim. We got dual cast again. How about that? Dual cast that dark orb. Play the chaos. We get the barrage. And we can recycle a glacier. All right. We survived the transient fight. We did take 30 damage on the first turn, of course, but we survived. Do I want buffer? Not particularly. Do I want beam cell? I kind of want beam cell. Beam cell works pretty well with the pen nib as well. Adding only one vulnerable, though. I, I think we skip it. We skip. We move on. We could die here. Just because we have to skip the first turn. We are lucky. We do not die here. Alright. What do we do in this battle? One of the things that we do in this battle is we... We play a Glacier and a Defragment. Defragment, Glacier, Chaos, I think. Oh, other Defragment and a Chaos. So by the way, we have Art of War and Happy Flower ready to go, which means we can play the Meteor Strike next turn. We can especially play it because we can recycle something first. 
Let's recycle our Tempest. Recycle the Tempest. Now we can play Meteor Strike easily. Meteor Strike, Hologram, Meteor Strike. And then Sunder for 36. Barrage. And then we can... We could Glacier and then Compile Driver, draw two cards, and then play Electrodynamics. And then that was a good turn. We definitely want to play Claw. Start there. We play a Defragment. We play... I don't think we play the Genetic Algorithm this turn. We could just... No, let's, uh, let's skim. We're going to play Recycle on one of these Defends. And we play Glacier. So now we're fully blocking, and we could dual cast that Lightning Orb. Or we could do that next turn. Let's do it this turn. We cannot play the Meteor Strike this turn, but we could play it next turn. Let's play... Actually, we could play it this turn because we have Recycle in the discard. If we want to Recycle the Sunder. Let's just keep the Sunder. We don't want to play Claw. No, no, we do want to play Claw. We have already used up our Art of War. Alright, 36 damage coming in. However, it feels like we're doing well. Claw. We can Glacier. We can Glacier again. And we're blocking fully, we can play Barrage. Remember to play Genetic Algorithm before the end of this battle. Because we're practically at the end of the battle. Genetic Algorithm can be played this turn, for example. Random cards. We can play Skim. Play a Claw again. And then we could Hologram to get back one of those. We could Hologram Claw, for example. Let's Hologram Claw. Win with a Claw. Alright, I don't care for the Sneko Oil. Let's skip that. Darkness plus Turbo. What do we think about Turbo? Or Reinforced Body? I actually really like Reinforced Body. Because we can gain a lot of energy. Let's get Reinforced Body. And then we need to heal. So we're going left here, and we're healing. And then we're going to into an Elite Battle. And we skip the first turn, which is dangerous in this sort of Elite Battle. But at least we have Electrodynamics. And Genetic Algorithm, for that matter. Electrodynamics first. Now, it would be great if we had more focus. We do have a focus potion, which we could use. Or we could play dual cast, which does 16 damage to all of them. Let's do that. Dual cast does 16 damage to all of them. Now, Chaos defeats them. Genetic Algorithm blocks. And then Barrage hits you. Great. That was actually a very good first... or first turn, my first turn, their second turn. I like Defrag, Defrag, Defrag. Let's go Defrag, Defrag, Defrag. 
do I want to play Glacier? No. Because we want that to hit multiple things. We could just play the Skim. Play the Skim, play the Claw. Play a Defend. Now we've got Recycle and Sunder. Sunder is perfect because it takes out this dagger and gives us our energy back. And you know what? We could recycle the reinforced body and play a huge Tempest. I mean, is that worth it? I, I don't know if that's worth it, but it's it's a possibility. Or we could just play the reinforced body as it is. Let's start with Compile Driver. Ooh, we could recycle to play Meteor Strike. Let's do that. Recycle. What do we recycle? Actually, maybe we just do Reinforced Body. Recycle nothing. Now we could play Meteor Strike. We could actually recycle this Tempest at this point. Let's recycle the Tempest. So recycle the Tempest. Now we've got tons of energy. We can play a dual cast. And then a Meteor Strike. And then a Sunder. And then a Glacier. And then a Hologram. And then a Meteor Strike. Seems pretty good. And unfortunately, we don't win this turn. On the plus side, we win next turn almost certainly. We do. Great. The Maw Bank, it's way too late for the Maw Bank to do much of anything. So, oh well. Another defrag. <laughs> you know, I do like having even more defrags. The Static Discharge is also really good, honestly. Which one would we rather have? Another defrag or a Static Discharge? And really, there's only the boss to think of. I want both of them, is the thing. I would add both to my deck and be quite happy. Let's take the Static Discharge. Haha, oh, a Sensory Stone. Now granted, I don't think I can spend my health here. Sadly. I need my health because we're going to get attacked on the first turn of the boss battle. So I'm only going to take one colorless card, because I need my health. I like all of these. I think that we take... Oh man, I like all of these. I think we take Master of Strategy. I am the strongest. Aha! And we absolutely have to rest, because if we don't rest, we could die very fast. All right, I feel pretty good about this one. Let's see if we can close it out. We take 24 damage on the first turn. You know, that's not the best. But now that it's not the first turn anymore, we can play our cards. We are going to play a Focus Potion, certainly. We're going to play this energy potion and this entropic brew. And then what? I mean, the ancient potion is fine. What does the ancient potion do for us? I don't know exactly what the ancient potion does for us in this battle. Let's let's use it and maybe it will do something. We want to play a defrag. We definitely want to play some block. I think Glacier is a good block card. And then we can claw and then double the 
compile driver, or or I mean double the barrage. We could play compile driver and then double the barrage. I like that. Let's do that. Compile driver, double barrage. I would rather double barrage than sunder, even though sunder does more damage, because barrage only costs one. And we need to block this turn. So, can we play Defrag Glacier to block? Glacier adds seven. So that's... I think that works. Defrag Glacier. Yeah, that, that leaves plenty of room for blocking. Great. So we do want our Electrodynamics out. What else are we going to do? We want Static Discharge out. We also don't want to take damage this turn. Currently, we are blocking 21, we're taking 30. Although... We can reinforce body... Actually, we, we could play the Essence of Steel. Let's play the Essence of Steel. That's perfect, because that gives us four plated block. And then one defend means that we're blocking fully, which means we can play electrodynamics and static discharge. Actually, electrodynamics is going to block for us. I kind of forgot about that part. Oh well. We remembered it at some point. I would really like to play Meteor Strike this turn. We can play Meteor Strike. Where's our dual cast? Our dual cast is still in our deck. And there's only four cards. So if we play Master of Strategy after playing something else, like Meteor Strike, Maybe what we do is we... What do we do? Let's play Chaos first. Chaos... And then we play Master of Strategy. This only draws two cards. We got our Genetic Algorithm. This is not the worst time to play that. But it's not the best time either. We've got the Reinforced Body. Let's play Defrag and Reinforced Body. That blocks... It doesn't block fully, does it? It's close enough. Next turn we're going to have the Recycle, which is quite nice. All right, so I think what we do is we recycle. Oh man, what do we do? We could recycle Tempest and have lots of energy this turn, which means we could play two Meteor Strikes. Sure, I'm fine with that. Recycle Tempest. Recycle Tempest. Play Meteor Strike. I'm sorry. Play Dual Cast. Play Dual Cast. Play Meteor Strike. Hologram. The Meteor Strike. And then play Meteor Strike. And then we still have six. Which means we can skim to hopefully draw Meteor Strike. I was hopeful. The hope did not did not work that time. Let's play a Chaos. And then... I really wish that Sunder killed Donu. It's sad that it doesn't, but oh well. We still play it. And Reinforced Body blocks fully. Didn't even need to use our Energy Potion. 
Now this turn we can definitely kill Donu. We can also play Meteor Strike. Let's play Meteor Strike on Decca, and then was there a Dark Orb? How did we kill Donu? <laughs> I didn't see what happened there. That's okay. We can dual cast to get more energy. Then we can hologram Meteor Strike and play Meteor Strike. And then, you know, keep going. We're basically keeping these defends in our hand so that we don't draw them. We can Glacier, then Compile Driver, I guess. Glacier, Compile Driver. Claw, whatever. And do we Glacier or do we Genetic Algorithm? I think we Glacier Defend... Defend. And Defend. We still have our Genetic Algorithm for whatever time we actually need it. We could recycle the Glacier. Let's recycle a Glacier. That way we can Meteor Strike and still Meteor Strike next turn. We can get back Meteor Strike right now. I see Meteor Strike into Glacier into Compile Driver, into a Chaos, into a Barrage, and then Reinforce Body for Block. Actually, we can just play these for Block. Okay. And then Sunder for Victory. Great. Okay, that was a fun one. I, I liked that deck. And we have one yet again with the defect on Ascension 5 this time, skipping the first turn of every battle. I did have to reset one of the battles because I made the mistake of playing on the first turn, but still we reset that battle, so we took away the mistake. And in my mind, it still counts. All right, that was two victories tonight. I set my personal best, and then I beat that and set a new personal best. So this has been a good night for Slay the Spire. We also got Mystery Machine because we traveled to 19 question mark rooms that, that, that run. Very nice. We also perfected one of the bosses. All right. Well, that's going to be it for tonight. I was very happy with that one. We we won with the Watcher. We won with the Watcher on Ascension 4. And we won with the Defect on Ascension 5 with a very quick loss with the Defect in between. Anyway, thanks for coming. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. And it's really nice to set new personal bests for these challenge runs. I feel pretty good. And I'm also very glad to have converted Gale. <laughs> converted Gale to see the light of Recycle. Um, especially with how they work with, with how Recycle works with x cost cards. It can be quite nice. Alright. Hopefully I will see you in the next one.